Good morning everybody and welcome to Rob's Junction. This is a stunning little natural water in Anston near Rotherham and we're here today to pleasure fish. So last video you guys saw was in a match and today we're just having a nice leisurely uh, pleasure fishing session. This place as you can see behind us is absolutely stunning. I've just had a little walk around so there'll be a, a short video showing you around and you'll, I'm sure you can appreciate just how beautiful it is. I do want to say thank you as well. Uh, the first video we put on from Aston Park went better than we could have ever expected. Uh, I think we're currently sat at about 2,000 views at the minute and it's been less than a week. So thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you do, follow, subscribe, whatever it is on YouTube and uh, stay tuned for more. I'll let Charlotte give you a quick look round and hopefully next time you see us, we've, uh, we've got them fish feeding. So I'm sure you can agree, it is absolutely beautiful. Let's catch some fish. So we've uh, just had his first fish. Well, his first bite. Uh, rod whipped round, I struck into it, fish were definitely on, and then we realized the camera went going. So I've kind of let fish swim a bit, hoping it would stay on while we got going, to you know, film a bit of that YouTube magic. Didn't work. So we're gonna get my cart and see if we can get him again. So today, as I mentioned before, we're doing some feeder fishing. And because it's a natural water, we've gone with natural bait. So I'm hoping you can see that. We've got brown crumb, brown bait, hemp, a few micros and a bit of corn. Big cage feeder. 30 centimeter up length for a foot, 12 inch, however we're gonna do it. We're a single piece of corn up bottom. So what we're gonna do is load as cage feeder up nice and tight with that heavy particle mix. So we like that. And then we're fishing just sort of out in front of us to right a bit. Now for this time, we uh, managed to get that fish in. What I should have done is uh, I've gone about filming and, uh, and just landed fish. As you can see, you can probably see it ripples on water. That's where we're fishing. I'm estimating about five, six foot deep there but I'm not very good at estimating. So all we do is sink as line, wait till you can see it skipping across water. Once them two dots meet, you're sunk. Nice and tight. Onto his rod rest. And then just in. So it's not fast paced fishing. It is a natural venue. So we'll cut and We'll see what we can. Right, so we've got our first fish up there. And uh, as I say, bear in mind it's a natural water. I think this might be a perch, but I'm not sure I haven't seen it yet. So let's have a look. It's a nice little, it were a nice little skimmer. But, uh, 
we've lost it. So what we did, we have swapped from corn to maggot just to get some little fish interested. So we're still on ground bait feeder, but we've got two maggots on. Uh, my method of thinking is get some little fish in and then feed them off. Because if you've got a lot of little fish in your swim, big fish, they're nosy. So they'll come in and bully the little skimmers off. So we'll get back out and hopefully next one we'll land it. Oh, great. I apologise about my breathing as well. I've got a proper stuffy nose at the minute. If I sound a bit like a water buffalo, I apologise. Right, that's trap set. Eat another go. So, the beauty of pleasure angling, especially at this place, you can have two rods. So, what I've done is I've got the ground bait feeder over there, um, just with maggots, same place we're casting. And Charlotte will show you, she'll just lean it round. We've got a little waggler just down on this margin here. And what I'm doing is I'm feeding down the inner micros. Ground bait, and just a couple of lumps of corn, because if there are tension here, they they love reeds, margins, features, because they love hiding in them. So hopefully, if that one's not screaming off, we can try and catch a couple of these fishing margins. So uh, two rods, two tan, two two two. Jamie, edit that bit out. So two rods, two chances at catching. That's how we get one. Well, we've got our first fish. It's come from his waggler. And let me tell you, it's massive. Look at the size of that. I am having to swing precariously because them trees are right overhead. We've got a greedy little roach and the hook in the finger. We've caught a massive deep on the Yeah, as I said, it's a natural water. So these are the fish you're going to catch when you're fishing single maggot. But that is an absolutely stunning roach. I don't know if you can see it. It's a stunning roach. Absolutely perfect. So we're off to a start. Let's hope they get bigger. Get on. Will do. So the ground bait feeder that we've had on isn't working at the minute, but it's a perfect opportunity for me to show you these Preston interchangeable systems. Um, so at the minute we've got a 30 gram cage feeder on and a 30 centimetre rug length. Now usually what you'd have to do is either have two rods set up or completely tackle down your rod. Whereas with these inline interchangeable systems, I can change it from cage feeder to a hybrid feeder in 30 seconds. So all we need to do is put your little stop up, push your stem out, and then all the feeders are going to split in back. So we'll just pop off the cage feeder, get us hybrid or method or maggot, bomb, the also works. Pop it back down its stem, get the cap back on, there we go, we're on an hybrid. Now, with an hybrid feeder, you don't want a 30 centimetre up length. So again, you've got your quick change bead, your up length just pops off, so we pop that back there for when we do want to go back on that. And because we're going up method, I'm going to be using a wafter. So we just get as four inch up length. I do like these Guru ones at the minute. I used to use Preston ones, um, but these, these are the really good up, proper sharp. Four inch up length with a bayonet. As you can see, back over your quick change bead. Push it in, 
and in less than a minute we've gone from a standard cage feeder with 30 centimeter hook length to an hybrid with a four inch hook length so all we need to do now is choose what we're doing so i'm going to use a dynamite orange wowser now my little tip for this is when you're using a bayonet we don't push it all the way in Or if you've got big hands like me, you don't push it in at all because you can't. So we just pop the bayonet. Try again. They are very fiddly when you've got big hands. You just pop the bayonet spike in. And what I do, you can see, I have it about halfway in. Now, in my head, what that does is helps that wafter stay a bit more buoyant at flocks. They don't pop up, they don't float. But on surface, uh, on bottom, it'll just wobble like that in flow at water. So we get our quick mould, hook bait in there, a few micros, pat it down, hold it round, that leaves like that. Like I said, because there's a lot of bream in here as well, I'm going to top that off. With some of that particle mix that we had on as well. Give that a rate, good squeeze, and we're ready. So hopefully, we have a bit better look on that nice short up length. We're going to fish in the same area because there's already a good blanket of bait. Just there. Let that sink. And we're good to go. Yep. Right, so that method feed has worked a bit better than the ground bait. So it's by no means a massive fish, but it's a fish nonetheless. And it's a bit bigger than them roach we've been catching. It's a lovely little skimmer. Oh, so there is it. Yeah, then. That's oh, right. Not big fish at all, but they are beautiful fish in here. You can tell owner and obviously the people that come and fish really do look after the fish because they are absolutely immaculate. Look at that. Right, so let's get him back. And on to the next one. Yeah. Fish on. It feels a little bit bigger than the last one. Uh, another little skimmer. There's a match angler. There is some. Uh, rather calming and relaxing about coming pleasure fishing to a natural water oh perfect to knock in i bet i couldn't do that again and catching fish like this i seen a match you'd be hitting them and if you're hitting them at the same sort of um rate that we're hitting these at the minute you'd be unhappy you, you wouldn't be doing well you'd be thinking oh god everybody else is catching whereas here it's just, it's just different. It's nice to actually relax and fish. We've got a bit of propolis. So this venue has got a rule where you have to use fish care. Like I said, it, it looks after its fish really, really well. And you can tell because of the quality of them. And this one has got a little bit of a cut just on its lip where we've hooked him. So all we're going to do, it probably doesn't taste nice, mate, so I apologise. You just put a bit of that onto that hooking wound. And then release him. Yeah, he's flipping about now. He don't like the taste of that. So that's not as nice as them pellets I've just been ogling up. Well, I'll we'll stick him back in. And hopefully they keep coming. And they tell the big brothers where that snap is. Next fish. Oh, 
we're on again. Another little skimmer, I'm guessing anyway. I haven't seen it yet. It's a, it's not a skimmer. It's a beautiful little tench. Now these fish are my all time favorite fish. If I were to become a specimen angler, it would be these that I'd target because specimen tench they're absolutely stunning. So shall I bring the camera over here now? Let's have a look at this. You've got to be really careful with tench because they've got lovely big fins. Look at that. Look at the size of them fins. Absolutely beautiful. Stunning fish. So that feeder line we've got now has picked up a bit. So we'll have another pop out and uh, see if we can't get another. So, as you saw, the ground bait feeder weren't exactly working well. So we've gone on to this hybrid feeder. There's a handful of micros in there. Hook baiting first again. Good squeeze. Love the presentation in that. And what this does, as opposed to a flat bottom method feeder, this has got raised sides a bit. So what it does it forces fish to have to put its mouth inside that feeder where your up bait is. And they can't suck around like they can on a conventional flat bottom feeder. They've got to get their lips right in there to get that food. So as before, we're just going to let that line sink, get half a turn, and up onto rod rest. I don't know if you can see that far down, but we've got his rod really close to the water, and at a, an opposite angle to where you've got your line and your bait. So I've got my bait out there, my rod facing that way, and where it does it just puts a little curve in your rod, so you can see indications like that. Now, I don't think that were a bite, because it were really just a, a sharp knock. So that's what we call a liner. So what's happened is, a fish has just swum into your line. So there's not water, it's next to invisible, that line. So fish do swim into it. And you can tell if it's a line then, because it's just a really sharp knock, and it'll go back to normal. If it were a bite, that tip would either bend round or wobble backwards and forward with fish thrashing its head, because obviously, it hooks hit its lip. So we've let that settle. So we're not going to get a bite straight away. All we'll do is drop a couple of pellets over the top of where we're feeding. And it acts as like I call it a dinner bell. And that plopper pellets hitting water. Fish will hear it, they'll smell that bait and then they'll fall, hopefully anyway follow them pellets down to the floor where there's a nice bed of bait. An hour up waiting for him. Let's get our little tighten up. That line's dropped slack from that liner. And the traps are set, as they say. Well, I've dropped the uh, a little pole rig over where we were originally feeding that um, waggler line, just down to the left in margin. Now we've, there's some lovely little skimmers down there. Oh! The little shit. I knew I should have fastened my apron up. So again, not big fish by any stretch. Bit of imagination, but they are beautiful. Is that downside to skimmers and breamer light? They are slimy, horrible little buggers. So, a couple of my non fishing friends asked last video 
what is that you're fishing with and why aren't you casting it out like a real uh, like a normal rod well for them that don't know most of you will because you'll have looked for fishing videos but if you are a non-fishing friend it's called pole so instead of having a rod and reel you have a piece of carbon with elastic through it and then a little rig on end and it's just a really accurate way of fishing so we wag, look, you're, you're just as accurate as you cast whereas on pole you can pinpoint exactly where you're dropping that rig every single time so instead of fishing a large area like we tend to do with um feeder which is art with pole you're fishing a much smaller area so you can be really accurate and drop your bait in the exact spot and put your hook there right over the top of it so nobody likes that bit of a gust of wind then took you flying and i'm not going to lie to you you were about six inch away from going for a swim So we've just got two maggots over some ground bait and then we're feeding maggot and ground bait just over the top and as I said the, uh, the big fish in here they haven't got much energy they're not biting like you know we don't but these little fish really are so if little fish are biting we fish for little fish. And as I mentioned before, that is the beauty of pleasure fishing. Every single fish is a good fish. So you're not trying to get a big weight. You're not going for the biggest in pond. You just start to enjoy yourself. And that's what we like about it. There's no stress, no rush. When we do walk into these little fish like that. So if I were in a match, I just looked into that and be like, Ah, it's a skimmy hog, it weighs no, it's a couple of ounce. Whereas today, they've got some energy. Um, today, we're just thankful for every single fish. Again. Oh, that's a flying fish, so he's going to go straight back in. Little tip as well, if you are catching bream or skimmers, it's really important to get all that gunk off your hook and off your line because it will mess up your presentation so it, it tries to float so it'll kick your line out of shape it'll you know you, you just won't present as well if you've got bream gun call over you um lovely two little maggots and we're only fishing top two plus two as you get more and more into these videos and the more you watch you'll realize top two plus two is my favorite length to fish long pole is not my friend as you saw in aston park video i drop a lot i'm keki coggy handed do they call it cocky handed i don't know basically i'm very clumsy so long pole for me is not my friend so we like to fish short so we can be nice and accurate and there's less to mess up with What we're going to do is just flick a small pinch of maggots just where we're fishing. And just wait for that hook to bury in that fish's mouth. You can see now on camera, we're just in this margin, not very far out at all. And then again, we'll just lift his rig up, drop it back down just to make sure it's presenting properly. Fantastic camera skills here from his camera woman, Charlotte. And there's some up taking that and fish on. Go oh, and fish off. This elastic is definitely, it's too heavy for the fish that we're, we're going to be catching in here. But it's lightest elastic I've got. So I, I tend not to fish for these type of things. So we haven't got any really light elastic. So we will bump off them. They haven't got enough to 
you know, to fight against to keep them on. So they'll hit it, the last will go tight and they'll, the hook will just pull back out. Yeah, so I'm playing with it again. It's knocked it out, so we'll lift it up and drop it back on its end. What we're doing, we're lifting it up because the fish will knock it and take your line, move it out a bit. So what you want to do is lift it really gently and put it back over that pile of bait that you've put in. Because that's where most of the fish are going to be. Yeah, we've got a, I think it's a cicada, I think they're called, I'm not sure, but we've had a little friend. So we got here at 8 o'clock. And that, he's even turned to camera look. He's not camera shy, this guy. He's been here since 8 o'clock. We've moved him three or four times and he just comes back. He's been hiding on Charlotte's Hood and now he's just sat on my side tray wanting to be centre of attention looking at camera. So while we're fishing down in this margin, we have still got his method feeder out, but there's not much happening at all. Every now and again, I ping a couple of pellets off at top and just try and ring that dinner bell. But it's... It is very leisurely, slow-paced fishing, at least for us today. Because obviously it's a new venue, we've never fished it before, we don't know where to fish, what to do yet. There are a couple of anglers um, after carp, so some specimen anglers. I've got two to my left, two to my right. Um, and the two guys closest to me have both had some nice carp. I didn't get a good look, so I'm having to peer under the tree, but it... Uh, it was definitely a, a double figures carp that the guy to my left got out, very nice. And we're in here just checking all them little ones out at way that they don't want to bother with. Mind you saying that, some of the hooks that they'll be using at bait that they've got on them will be bigger than fish that we're catching. And here we have the angling wife. So I've just nipped back to the van to pick me, uh, pick me easy up, come back and I've lost my box. I'm getting done because I've uh, moved my pole roost of a landing net for him. There we go, Charlotte's first little skimmer right there. Like a pro. Other little fish. I'm going to have to take it back off now because if she ends up kicking my bottom, I'll not be happy. So, oh, we're uh, swapped up that feeder again. The, uh, the stop coming to the method feeder. We've gone back on ground bait feeder. And uh, this is definitely as big as fish up there. Again. It's not a big fish, but it is the biggest of the day. I think it's going to be a bream. We are, it's coming in. It says it's a nice bream. Just, just mindful of them trees. I keep forgetting there's trees above us. And from what I hear, there are some decent sized bream in here. And this one, I'd say, is maybe a pound. Could be two. Definitely the fish that we're looking for, them ones. So, let's see. Nice bream, that is. And it's got some uh, big old lips, isn't it? Lovely fish. So, as I said, we're back on ground bait feeder, and I've changed up that up length. Now, usually on a conventional ground bait feeder, you want between 9 and 12 inch up length. But rather than I've kept a 4 inch up length. Now, the reason I've done that, I'd never have ever done it before until I watched Guru's underwater video with Matt Godfrey, Steve Ringer, and someone else. And they were fishing uh, ground bait feeder, not in line, but they were fishing sort of a conventional helicopter rig. And what they were doing is they had a camera set up and cast into the camera. Now they found 
that even on a conventional feeder, the shorter the hook length, the more fish they were catching. Because they're breeding, they, they're a bit sneaky. What they were doing was picking hook length up, they were picking bait up, and they were swimming sort of, what the hell, 30, 40 seconds before Matt, who were on rod, were even noticing. And by then, they'd managed to check that hook bait out. So I've done the same, I've shot on that hook length. And it's worked. Uh, hopefully, there is enough feed down there for them bigger bream now. We might see one or two coming in. So we'll uh, leave it there. And we'll be back with a nice bream. We've got another one. Fish on. It's not the size at Laston, but it's definitely another skimmer. Yeah, she's here, look. Nice little skimmer again. We'll certainly take a few of them, 100%. Now, I ain't got a clue how many fish we've had, because we caught a lot of them little roach or rud, whichever ones they were. And yeah, Charlotte, uh, Charlotte had a go. I had to kick her off because she was showing me up. So in 10 minutes, she'd had three fish. So enough for enough, she's off, and I'm not having her make me look bad. So I'm just loading that feeder back up. What we need to do actually is change the maggots. Should have done that before we load the feeder up. So Devon's top tip at there. Hook bait before ground bait. He says as he's putting his hook bait on after ground bait's already full. So his ground bait today is, uh, I think I've already showed you already, but it's brown crumb, we hemp and corn. And it's been wonderfully mixed by our cameraman Charlotte. Absolutely perfect. Oh, let's get this back out. Waste no time. Let's see if we can get some more and then bigger green. Perfect. And another one. This one's come we in about two minutes. Oh, we've lost it. Never mind. Right, so because we've noticed there's a few more fish in a swim, I'm going to be a bit more positive with feed. So I've made a few catapult sized balls. There is ground bait. I'm just going to ping them. So, sort of like, if you imagine you're fishing in a square. We're just going to feed each corner of that square. So again, just little palm size at the ground bait. Squeeze into a ball that will fit in your catty. And just drop it around where you're fishing. And hopefully then what will happen is, when your ground bait's in your feeder, it'll drop straight down. Whereas loose feeding it, as soon as it hits that water, it's going to break down a bit and sort of fall as a blanket. So what I do, I feed, like I say, four corners at square where we're fishing, just to bring fish in. So they'll see it falling, and hopefully they're going to follow that particle bait, like your empty corn, and then a few pellets that we put in, down to the floor and just start hoovering it up. Proof will be in pudding. If, we, if it works, we'll get a few more bites. Right, so that bomb has done the trick. We uh, came off at corn, dropped maggot on, and we have probably got what is the biggest fish of the day. A lovely foul looked baby skimmer. <laughs> uh, what's happened here is that fish has probably uh, like barrel rolled or swum past that hook bait. And uh, oh, 
Hey, little guy. Look at that. I'm not even the size of my palm. But again, absolutely beautiful fish. Perfect condition. So, last tactic to try today, because so it's, uh, it's coming up to half past three. We don't want to stay too long. And it's last tactic that day is maggot feeder. So with plenty of maggots left, which we are going fishing on Monday, but we're not going to be using maggots. We're going to Airfield Lakes and that place is a big carp venue, so we're not really going to be using maggots. So we might as well give these fish something to eat. But again, Charlotte will bring camera of it. I'll show you that press and quick change system again. Now we need to get a maggot feeder out. Oh, we've lost Topper's maggot feeder. I'll have to search for that. We're going to have to use a little maggot feeder, but again, press them of. Uh, Water everything when it comes to these, so we we'll just slide us top off, slide off that bomb, and then your maggot feeder has got a slit running all the way through it. So we just feed line through that slit, drop it on, top it back on, and there you go. In seconds, you've got a maggot feeder. So we'll get this loaded up. But again, I nearly forgot. Hook bait first. We're going to go two red maggots. Nah. Go big or go home. Here. We'll go three. Two red. One white. And then with these, you know, you just open that slot up. And you'd riddle your maggots in. Charlotte hates these feeders because every time you close that door, one of them definitely manages to get snagged or stuck. So when uh, she's cleaning up and tackling down for me because she's a star, there's always a squished maggot somewhere. Uh, there we go. Feeder loaded up. Maggot on the hook. That's uh, a little bit short. That. So before the maggots get out, Let's bring it in nice and quick. No, maggots are out. It dumps them maggots pretty quickly in three years. So we're just going to load it back up. Close that door. And try and cast proper this time. There we go, perfect. Exactly where we've been putting all that bait before. The sinker's line. Avoiding that tree above us. Has already caused some issues today. Charlotte's already had to go and rescue a waggler. Now that line's sunk. Let's bring it back up. On to his rest. And rod falls off. So we'll get that set and we'll see if we can put this maggot feeder to work. So as we've been packing up, we've noticed that there's a lot of roach or rud um, topping on surface, uh, surface. Sorry. So what we're going to do, I'm going to uh, leave this running, catch a few of these, and then we're going to get packed up and we'll talk to you next in van.
afternoon, right. We've just packed up um, and we're about to leave Rob's Junction now. So first off, I thought I'd introduce you to camera one. It's where she's at this side. Um, so yeah, this is Charlotte. It's my uh, lovely fiance. Uh, what can I say about Rob's Junction? It is probably one of the most beautiful fisheries that we've been to recently. Um, Jumpy and Rob and I, I don't know the um, other lady owner's name, but they really look after this place. It's picturesque. Um, the fish are absolutely stunning. We've caught a lot of fish today. All small, but still a lot. There's no injuries, no fins missing, no mangled mouths. They, they really are looked after. On site, there's a little cafe. They sell a little bit of bait. Uh, you get to your peg and the lady comes round and takes your sandwich order. You pay for your day ticket half an hour later. Some absolutely amazing food turns up. Fishing wise, it it's a, a natural water. So it's not a commercial fishery. You're not going to come here and bag up one a chuck unless you want to fish for sort of roach and rud and in that case then yeah a couple of maggots on up we'll catch all day we had a few nice bream um but honestly i, I can't rate this place highly enough we'll definitely 